SES, which I was also worried about, but like, you know, I'm going to become like this really boring person. Um, <laughs> with so, no life. Right, with no life. Um, so I'm like, I'm, like, I see myself in 25 years, like not, or five years when I'm 25, uh, not doing that. Um, Cause like, I don't know, like I, I think like it's important to have some sort of balance. Um, and um, like not just between, you know, like work life, which is like the typical balance, but like, you know, like CS interests and other things. Um, so I hope that that's also happening in five years. So who is role model woman tech? When you think about who is that person for you, who is it? And I'll start with Lynn this time. You're supposed to say me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, let's see. Uh, it's kind of hard to say uh, in terms of like specific people. Uh, maybe, maybe Cheryl Sandberg, probably. Um, or because, well, at least I, I listened to her speak, and I know that, um, I, I don't know, I, I think I found her inspiring in that she was able to, to make changes to some of the general CS culture. Um, I don't think in terms of necessarily like what I would um, be doing, but because the story that, uh, that I heard her, when she spoke, she told a story about how when she got, well, it was supposed to sort of indicate how sometimes part, like some software engineering companies are not as friendly to women. Um, and she said that when she got pregnant, they added pregnancy parking spaces uh, which no one had ever thought of before until like, someone in a <coughs> position of <coughs> extreme power actually needed to use them. Uh, so I found, it, I found what she did inspiring, well I found it inspiring that she was in a position that she could make a change that would affect and, and help everybody else in the company. It'd be ideal if you wouldn't have to be in that sort of position of power in order to affect a change like that, um, but I found it inspiring that, uh, that changes like that can be and are being made um, and so that's what I found particularly. That's I think. Sophia. Um, well, I mean, like certainly you um, for what you've done at Harvey Mudd. So I guess I'll start with that. Um, I think like really like there isn't like that single person for me. It's sort of like a lot of different people who connect to have like different sort of like, aspects of like what I'd want to be. So for example, like what you've done with Women in CS at Harvey Mudd, kind of like what you've done your entire life in the Purdue Women in Technology. Like I resonate really strongly with that. And then also like Marissa Mayer. Um, who's, you know, at Google, really, really powerful, really, really smart, Stanford's DS, um, started at Stanford. Um, so she's kind of like, probably like the shining example that the most people name, um, you know, very visible. Um, but I mean, even like on a, like on a more, like personal level, I guess, like when I started section leading, for example, um, Lynn, who coordinates the section leading, like she was a role model. Um, she was you know, a couple years older than me, like doing cool stuff. Um, like other section leaders like that. Um, I think it's really just like a lot of people. And then like even though they're not women, like guys um, who I see who are like, oh, you know, like um, like Marin Sohami who's doing a lot of interesting things with CS in education. Like he's a role model. Um, so I think it's just really kind of like picking and choosing um, to be like, oh, you know, like I relate to you on some extent and you're doing things that I'd hope to do in the future. Molly. Um, two examples that I've been brainstorming definitely were, were just said there, both with Cheryl Sandberg and Chris Meyer, but I honestly think that the biggest role model for me would be my mother. Even, I mean, she happens to be in technology, but, you know, even if she wasn't, just the way that she's kind of encouraged me to go with whatever I'm passionate about, and, like, Brooke's absolutely no, I'm not sure where I'm going with that, but, like, she doesn't let you say, like, oh, I'm a girl, I'm not good at something. She mm -hmm. always pushes you twice as far, and it's like, no, you're better than these people because you have a different perspective. Like, go for it. Like, make it big. And I think that's something that I, I really took away, like, from the time I was little, to be like, no, I'm going to push farther. I'm going to do this. I think we're ready to allow our audience to ask this wonderful panel of three amazing <laughs> students some questions. So um, we have a mic here. We have a question over here. Is this up? Okay. Um, so as a high school student, I know that we have, like, a lot of high schools only have one computer science course. 
And so after, you know, we learn the syntax, and then after this one year, we take the AP test, and we're done. So in terms of classes, the high school is not going to offer anything like so that we can experience more. So I was wondering, um, do you have any suggestions as to how to continue um, gaining experience in this field? Who wants to take that? Um, sure, I can start. Um, yeah, I think like really, um, just like starting to realize just how many opportunities there are once you have that kind of those foundations to take them somewhere. Um, so concretely, like. Um, Stanford doesn't teach web programming until a bit later, and it's a very specific class for it. So I wanted to learn it earlier. Um, so at first, I tried to just like kind of like fiddle around with like web tutorials. It got kind of frustrating because a lot of them were just kind of poorly written, and then I ran into a problem that was just stuck. Um, so one thing that I found really helpful was finding like a book where it's um, and then with good Amazon reviews, um, where it's kind of like yeah, like you no, know, this is a very um, like organized way to like go about and learn something from the beginning, learning all the concepts that are going into it. So like think about some project that you want to do. Um, and one thing I had a problem with in high school is like I thought that um, if I was going to work on a project, like it had to be this amazing project, um, and it, or like but not you know getting carried away in that. Just I mean like I'm going to do something really small. Um, so for example, like I wanted to um, like I had all the Spanish vocabulary and I wanted to organize it. So like writing a program that you know reads in text from a file and re like reorganizes it, like that's actually really rewarding even though it's really small. So it's like wow, like I did this with you know, my skills in CS, and then taking that to something bigger, like if you want to make like a small game or something, um, or like if you want to make a website like for you and your friends. Um, I think just like trying to find a project and then finding some sort of coherent way to go and like realize it, and then like not having it be like, oh, this is my CS project where I'm going to learn everything in CS. Just like, yeah, like this is going to be just, I'm going to gain a little bit more experience, learn something interesting, um, and just sort of move from there. I want to reiterate the, the iTunes U thing. I know sometimes it's hard to, to motivate yourself to sit down and watch an entire class if you're not going to get credit for it, but it really is an awesome way to learn. I actually ended up watching 106A on iTunes U because I had another class at the same time. And so that's just how it worked for me, and I thought it was amazing. And I learned just as much from watching those videos as I would sitting in lecture. Uh, and so if you can motivate yourself to do that, that's an amazing way to practically get a CS class for free. Um, another thing is I didn't know web programming either and wanted to get a kickstart on it and it's like, hey, everyone else has personal websites, I want one of those, and like <laughs> use that as my own personal project. I was really motivated about it because it was all about me, and, <laughs> and that motivated me to get the web pro programming experience and figure out what it was all about. Google's your best friend. Yeah, I agree with the just sort of messing around on web programming. It can get a little frustrating, and to be honest, you probably won't necessarily have good design, good style, and how you actually make the website when you first make it, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, just sort of playing around with it, and then eventually taking, like, taking another class, then taking a class into it, you'll get more out of it, because you'll know and you'll recognize the problems that you have, and you'll start to be like, oh, yeah, I should have done that. That reminds, like, what I, I did some web programming before I had taken a web programming class as an intern. Um, and I looked back on that and I was like, I was horrible. I was, did so many things wrong. Uh, but I actually could recognize that I did, because I had done it before, I knew that I, had, that I was in danger of doing that again. So when I got that lesson, it actually stuck with me as opposed to uh, me just being like, oh yeah, of course, I would never do anything like that. I saw and I was like, I did all that stuff. Whew. Um, the other thing is like there's a lot of places online with fun activities to do, like Project Euler. Um, there's some other ones like that that are more less mathy and more just general CS. Um, and they're in small chunks, so they're easy to do quickly, and they're fun. Uh, so it's you know hopefully they'll keep you interested. Just one last thing to add: um, if you have like an existing project that you know your favorite project from your CS class, um, one thing that I find really helpful is just like taking that existing project and adding extensions to it. Um, that's actually something we do in our 106A classes too, where we get extra credit for extension. So sometimes it's easier to like take something that you see and think of like some way to make it better, and then go do that than like trying to brainstorm something totally from scratch. Great. Next question. Way over there. What I'm getting is, like for example, from you guys, is that programming that would be the first 
the star, you know, regardless of where you want to take it, what is the starting point? So the question is, if you were going to come to computer science, what's the first thing you would do? Well, I think know, knowing what I know now, I'd probably take or look at take 106A or online or something, just because I, I think it, it does an amazing job of introducing programming in a way that's not intimidating. Like I know I and I, I think pro, I think doing some programming is important to start with, just because it and. And I honestly, and even though like 106A is in Java, which is somewhat more, has a bit more overhead in terms of code, I think it's, it's very important that you sort of get, get the like fear of coding out of the way. Because I had no conception even of what code looked like. And I was very intimidated by the idea of it. I didn't understand how code could run anything. I had really no conception at all. But then when I started, it started making so much more sense. And then from there, you know, you, you can go to do whatever you want. But once you, you got to go over that hurdle and really sort of see and have the veneer stripped off of uh, you know, the idea of CS code as being this weird, magical thing that's difficult to understand. Um, and I think 106A, like, as a specific resource, is really a great way to um, do that, just because it starts it off you know, with Carol, and so a very simple um, way to get into the logic. And I, I thought there was no way that I would ever do it, but I actually ended up you know, changing my whole mindset, and I understood the, whether or not I was a good coder or had any experience coding. I hadn't programmed very much. But I actually was able to get a, the concept of what code was and what coding was um, by starting that way. So I believe there's also, uh, Eric and, and Julie, maybe you can uh, do this for me. There's also a, like a CS100 class? CS 101, 101, 101, sorry. This is the AP community, right, which is the, the AP is officially offered a coding course for high school, but college credit, you know, One of the things we've learned from uh, at Harvey My College is that if we start with a problem solving course where the, where the emphasis is really understanding the kinds of problems you can solve with computer science, instead of emphasizing learning to program, it seems to be much more appealing to many males as well as females. So uh, CS101, which you can access through Coursera, is a, an opportunity to take a, a look at that. Yes. sort of the moment where it's just like, I was, I was working on something I really cared about that like really felt like mine. Um, because me and uh, two other uh, friends made, just started wanting to make Scrabble um, in Java. Um, and it was something where it's just like, we started out and we were just like, this is gonna be hard. Um, and they were like, kind of breaking it down, um, you know, dividing it up. And then just like really struggling through like all the details of like, something so simple, like how do you track if somebody's move that they put onto the board is valid. Right, and that they're not just putting a tile there and a tile there. Um, and just like thinking through, like, gosh, like, how do you do that? Um, and really breaking that down, and then working on it, debugging it, putting a lot of time into it. Um, and then kind of at the end being like, look at, like, look at what we made. Like, this looks like Scrabble, like, this is awesome. Um, I think really that feeling of just like, you know, making something that you're proud of um, was kind of like the moment where I realized, like, oh, this is actually cool. Like, this is actually something that maybe I want to continue in. Um, and I think actually, like, going back to the previous question, and also what you said, um, like, I think it's almost an analogy to like, reading. Where it's like you learn to read and it's really boring because like you're learning the syllables. 
and like what sounds everything makes. And then like you actually read a book that like is meaningful to you in some way, that like you care about in some way, and that's what's like, oh, like that's what all that was for. Um, like that was really my experience there, where it's just like, here's finally something that like I actually care about, and then realizing like, oh, and it's not just, you know, I make this and then I'm done, it's like I can keep doing this, and like this is actually what it's really about. Um, for me, it was a couple of moments in 106A where uh, it was probably like three in the morning or something. I was sitting in the hallway, my roommate was already asleep, everything else was pretty quiet. And I'm sitting there and I'm like working on this bug and it's driving me insane and I want to bang my head against the wall and then suddenly I get it and my whole program works and I like try it on a couple different things and it's all working and I just get that intense feeling of like pride and happiness. It was like this emotional high after all of like the stress of trying to figure something out and I just like set my laptop down and started doing cartwheels down the hall. <laughs> Probably not a good idea at three in the morning when it's like concrete floors and stuff, but I don't know, I was so happy and I kind of sat down after I was like doing my happy dance and realized that like I didn't get that anywhere else. Like I know that I wasn't really invested in hang out or hangman particularly, but you know, I was so excited that I'd figured it out and I'd gotten this problem. And I don't know, I think that was what it did for me. Yeah, for me, I think it was when I, I solved a problem and I, I don't remember which, was, which it was exactly, but I remember looking back at it and then realizing, wait, this can be done another way in a better way. And it was when I did that, I sort of realized that coding had a lot more creativity than I thought it did. And I thought it had, and I realized that Writing a code, writing an essay, or sorry, writing code was more like writing an essay than just being like a robot, which is sort of what I thought it was. So when I did that, I realized that wow, CS can be um, beautiful and fun and interesting and creative, and I'm also capable of being creative in CS. Uh, we have time for one more, one more question. Yes. This is perhaps for all three of you. Um, as you go about getting your CS degrees, uh, is there any part of you that feels at all unfulfilled in your learning in some aspect? And you say, well, I also want to do this other minor, perhaps, or some other particular extracurricular far away from CS? Great question. So is there something, before you actually graduate with your degree, is there something you wish you'd had an opportunity to do as well? So I took a Shakespeare class last quarter, which, I mean, you would think is about as far away from CS as you can get, but you definitely, I mean, we reassembled Hamlet at one point in CS 107. So everything I find, there's some way to connect it to CS, which is kind of scary if you think about it. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of random classes that I, I thought I had an interest in, and it's like, oh, I'm just going to take this one for fun. And somehow, in lecture 27 or something, we're like, oh yeah, and here's this part of CS that we connect to, and I, I understand how to apply this D school class I'm taking to another class project that I'm doing uh, in terms of connecting a group of people and understanding group dynamics. So I find that really every class that I've done, there's, there's a way to relate it back to this core interest. So I think that you know, as much as, as there are these wide, varied interests that I have that I explore, and one of the great things about Stanford is they have those resources for you to take a really, really random class and see if you like it, but I always find a way to kind of relate it back and do something about it. Yeah, I mean, I definitely wish I could, I've taken a bunch of other different types of classes, and I wish I could take more, uh, because I think that it's, it's valuable for me to have be well-rounded and know a lot of different stuff, and because I've been able to relate it, like you say. Um, I've been really interested in art and been taking a lot of art classes, and I've, I've found not only that, I, that I'm able to integrate both together in terms of like what I create, I've been doing electronic art that involves like programming on an Arduino, um, which is you know, exciting and great to be able to use it in a way that's like very um, you know, relevant. But also I feel like the stuff that I learn in CS, like I've, I've been bringing some themes of like technology and stuff into my art, a lot about stuff that I've, or a lot of stuff that I've thought about. Um, and I also feel that the stuff that I've learned in other classes makes me better at CS. So yeah, I wish I could take as, you know, a whole bunch of different classes in a lot of different fields because I feel that, um, you know, in today's interdisciplinary world that everything is relevant. Um, and I've been able to get a lot out of other classes. Yeah, I mean, just to echo Molly and Lynn, like, 
I use, like for most other classes I take, and then also for the CS classes I take, it's like there's always connections. Um, and I think sometimes that plays out in interesting ways, where um, last winter I took an English course on uh, mixed race literature in the US and South Africa. And one day we were just kind of discussing, and I used the word templatized. I said, you know, all these characters are really templatized. And everybody just like looked at me and be like, templatized, what an interesting word. I'm like, oh, like we use it all the time, like in my CS class. <laughs> and they're just like, huh. Um, so I think like kind of that sense of like it gives you, like just giving you different vocabularies, kind of like to look at problems, um, and then not just seeing things, you know, from a CS perspective or solely like from an English perspective. Um, and I guess like on, it's like on a more personal level, like when I started doing CS, um, like that really, that really strong fear of like, oh, this is all I'm going to be doing now forever. Um, like that was actually the reason where initially uh, human computer interaction um, was actually like my way out of that because I saw like oh I can do this and I can do second art studio I can still be interesting um, and then I realized like as I got further into CS like I don't like like I still consider doing human interaction it's like I don't need to do that in order to also have these other interests um, or it's like they're not exclusive so it's like I kept you know I started doing more theory and more systems in computer science um, but I was still you know able to take like improvisation um, or like creative writing. Um, or like a dance class, and it's just like, cool, like, this is, you know, just one part, it's not this all-consuming, like, thing that's gonna, uh, you know, destroy everything else you're interested in or something. It's really, like, very integrative. Let's give our panelists a round of applause, because that's so awesome. passionately and efficiently. Once again, let's thank our future leaders in tech. Thank you, Caitlin. Dr. Seuss, who someone I find most insightful, once said that the questions are complicated, but the answers are quite simple. However, it always takes us a long journey with a number of hiccups, missteps, flips, and flops, until we stumble upon that key answer. I hope the next portion of our conference, the networking lunch, will be a stepping stone in the process of finding these key answers to the questions we ask today. I hope that the stories that we share between ourselves and the students will bring us one step closer to finding the solutions to these problems. I would like to invite you all to step downstairs for this networking lunch. If you all have noticed, most of you who have name tags will have a sticker with a number on it. Those, except for our students and panelists, who I will direct to at the table. However, all the other attendees will have a sticker and that will direct you to which table has been assigned to you. If there are any questions or complications in this matter, please feel free to find me. I'll be heading downstairs with you guys and also there will be a registration table with the numbers of the tables you have been assigned to. Thanks and happy networking. Thank you.